Oh, that's so sick to see, though. What? What? No, 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 no. Oh, my God. Oh, I got out. Oh. How did I manage to get out of that? Yeah. Holy crap. How do you... Wait, what? How are you supposed to... Oh. It make it all the way through that? It, it doesn't despawned. make any sense. I can't believe I lived that. <gasps> oh. oh! What's up, guys? This is 22 with Big Time Meta, and this is the first episode of Level Up, a big time podcast where we give players the info they need to level up their gameplay, in addition to shining a light on community feedback to help the big time team level up the game. I got Sneaky here with me. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, Sneaky? Hey, 22. I'm Shadowblade main. Uh, I'm big into Web3 and, you know, the Loaded Lions. And I'm big into NFTs and I've been gaming all my life. And I'm really excited to be here to talk about the game. I'm really passionate about big time and I really want to help level it up. Awesome. So today was a big day, obviously. Ruby past day. Patch notes just dropped. So a lot of this is stuff that was leaked. And, but there is a lot of cool stuff that's just brand new. Can't wait to dive in and, and see what exactly this looks like in-game. So first things first, the big kind of not really a surprise, the data reset. Everything's just on a full hard reset, pocket watches, gear, everything except for NFTs. There was a bit of contention over this, but they've been hinting at this for a while. I'm glad that they did this. I know from a game development perspective that it's almost a necessity to weed out a lot of the pre-existing bugs and to fundamentally bug test everything from the ground up. I've been rooting for a full reset for a good while. And th there's so much in this update that it, in the long run, it's going to be good for the game. Uh, but it looks like they started out with a bunch of bug fixes. Fixed an issue that could lead to dungeons taking longer than expected to join. So I guess that's improved load times. That's interesting. Fixed dungeons being joinable after the final boss round was complete. Yeah, we're going to have to test that because I'm not 100% sure what that means. Because I know before there was definitely issues where part of your party would leave. And then during that loot timer phase, if people tried to rejoin and create a new dungeon, it wouldn't do that until the entire party was out. To me, this says... Maybe that's not a thing. Maybe now your party can start a new instance if the final boss round is complete. But I don't know. We'll have to test that. And from what I heard on Buck's stream, the community manager, he said that even if one player starts a dungeon, it will still count how many players are in the party and acclimate the dungeon to that many players. Fixed enemy hit effects not playing reliably in some cases. I don't really understand it too much uh, other than the fact that maybe your hits weren't connecting. Not quite sure what that means, but glad they fixed that. Loot chests will no longer drop loot off of ledges in some cases. I've personally never experienced this, but obviously that's that seems like a welcome change. Fixed several types of items being encrypted that were not intended to be. The intention word is, is interesting, but I know in general, people like Blazo uh, in the community, we've been having this broader discussion about encrypted items and what should be encrypted and what shouldn't be. And I know, like, for example, on release bags were being encrypted and they've dealt with that very quickly. Yeah, during the uh, ending phases of Jade, the decryption was very expensive and I haven't played it yet, but I'm really hoping to see, you know, just a few things maybe like gears fixed issues with already opened loot chests i've actually seen this bug a lot um as a shadow blade i've been running around the map so i, I open almost every chest and sometimes i go uh, to up to a chest that has already been opened by a party member but looks closed so i'm assuming that's what they're going with with this fix Fixed several areas where players could get out of the world. Now, with this, they could be going in a few different directions with this, but my instincts with this are there's definitely several areas, especially during something like gold and silver, where you could easily get on top of big hills and reach the edge of the map and fall off. And they worked already in a prior patch to prevent some of that, where there's just a lot of areas that you can't access anymore by because like, they just basically made invisible walls. To me, that it says there's even more of that now and so now it's even harder to kind of reach those unintended areas and, and fall off the world fixed a bug that could cause skill and stat points not to be awarded upon level up in some situations 
Uh, that's interesting. Uh, really glad to see that they dealt with this. I know for a fact there was a few instances of this where obviously it's a very frustrating thing to have happen. Uh, saw it a couple times in the Discord. What do you think about the forums? Was that something that was happening a lot? I know you're in the forums a lot. I, I definitely did see it a few times in the f forums. Like you said, it's a frustrating thing to deal with, and I'm honestly glad like they, they dealt with it so quickly because coming into Ruby, this is definitely something we didn't want to have happening to this many players all at once, and it's a testament uh, about the support systems and about the reporting systems and the forums actually getting to the big-time team. Fixed issues with chat UI input remaining active after the menu was closed. Yeah, I mean, I know in general, chat interactions have been an issue. I'm glad they're starting to clean that up. Fixed a bug that would cause accepted party invites to display invite canceled. Uh, I've definitely seen a little bit of that. Um, again, we're, we're getting closer to a really crisp party system. Fixed some cases of floating props near portals in the overworld. I feel like you would have some comments on that, no? I actually saw this. I, I believe they're referring to the portal itself has like these bushes or trees, kind of these things that are attached to it that were spawning and levitated above the ground. That's what they're talking about, I would assume. Fixed issues with rotating fire traps applying damage out of sync with the visuals of the trap. Just in general with traps, I feel like there was a one-off execution with it where i feel like we could see more of it and i think we do see more of it in ruby really cool to see that fixed a bug causing previously equipped nfts to display incorrect title text information yeah th this was a really mild duplication bug in the cosmetics tab where if you started to move stuff around and, and you equipped certain nfts it would in some cases create this like fake duplicate uh, i experienced that a lot too and like you said, it was just some copy ghost skin of your original NFT. It, it did not give you an actual additional one. I'm glad that they fixed that problem with it because uh, it was the only problem that I saw with it, the NFT system. Fixed various issues with a chat window focus. Yeah, I mean, that's just more chat stuff. Again, glad they're doing that. Fixed zone names not displaying correctly in some cases. I don't think either of us have really seen this, but uh, I mean, obviously... Fixing that is always good. Fixed various rare client crashes. Uh, again, it's part and parcel with it being an alpha. I'm glad to see that they're cleaning up some of these weirder crashes. Fixed not being able to right click to use consumables when they were placed in a bag. Now, this one is a little spicy. I am not 100% sure what they mean, but I know, for example, with something like the Tree of Life, It'd be in your bag, you'd have, there would be, when you're in combat, there would be an internal timer, uh, which is actually something they patched in, where it was, the timer was always there where you couldn't use it, but they patched in, uh, like, a visual feature where you could see when you, uh, where you were in combat, and in theory it was a timer that was telling you when you got out of combat and then could use it, but I think... There were some issues where you were unable to use it immediately after getting out of combat in some cases, and I, I, I think, I assume that's what they're referring to. I don't know what other consumables this would apply to. I've experienced some cases where I've had a health potion or a summon party potion or a speed potion in my bag, and, and I've right-clicked it, and I was unable to use it. That was probably what they're referring to. I, yeah, I think I have had some instances where I've seen that, where they just straight up don't work. Yeah, that makes sense. And then just, you know, general performance stuff. This is going to keep happening. Uh, you know, in this case, particle systems. Looks like the load of them have been reduced. That's good. Balance issues. This is really, this is juicy. Gold penalty on death has been increased. Now, that's, it's really interesting. I feel like most people don't even know that there was a gold penalty on death. And so to see it be increased, a lot of this is really going to come down to how much has it increased. I'm personally glad to see it. This is a good way to remove some gold from the economy and uh, actually have a sink for it. It gives you a sense of penalty to death. It, it, like There's actually a reason to not want to die anymore. We got taking damage from ailments and traps will now break players out of rest. I think that's pretty standard. Higher level items now have a better chance of rolling uh, affixes, which is the, some of the... I know each item, because of the way that the loot works, it's procedurally generated... You have those titles that are associated with different stat bonuses. Really cool to see higher level items, uh, like higher rarity perhaps too. I, I don't know if that, maybe it's both, maybe it's one or the other. I assume perhaps both, but certainly higher level items. 
now have a better chance of rolling better stats because i know that was definitely an issue fire traps in ice dungeons are now more deadly but can be disabled uh yeah seems like they're cleaning up some of the trap stuff in general and making it more interesting and hopefully they're introducing more of that with this patch summon is no longer allowed during combat and has been given a longer cooldown this one is crazy uh, summoning potions are awesome they're one of the best parts of the game i'm really interested in your thoughts on this no longer allowed in combat and they have a longer cooldown well i mean this it's going to change gameplay entirely summoning while you're in combat was one of the things that a lot of people did to get out of a, a rut uh i i remember chugging potions like crazy to get through dungeons so this is definitely going to alter gameplay a lot we'll see how it affects us yeah, my, my first reaction is the difficulty definitely goes up, which is good. I, I think that is a direction they need to go in. And it's just, I do want them to be careful about how they go about increasing difficulty. But I think that this is a reasonable change. I'm really excited to see how this changes gameplay. Summon and one-way ticket to town can no longer be cast while airborne. Yeah, it seems like a pretty standard change to go ahead and, and throw in with that other one. The drop rates for various consumables has been reduced uh yeah again the, to me this is a great way to deal with like wanting to introduce a gold sink when you get a drop like a speed potion like you know a summon party potion those are worth a lot of gold and making those drop less often is, is just effectively a gold sink and i actually really like that implementation the amount of health and energy given by higher level gear has been tweaked uh, we'd have to see the numbers on this, to be honest. And, and to be fair, I mean, at least in my eyes, high-level gear, you're not super sweating the details about health and energy. It's it's much more about broader stats. Hopefully it's tweaked a little bit more. Higher-level gear should have a little bit more, in my opinion. But uh, it's all to the context. And then uh, loot tables have been adjusted across all enemies. Again, it's hard to... You know, who knows what that means? But I would hope... Exciting. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna have to experiment and kind of speculate on what that even means. But I will say, finding a mythic of anything or an exalted of anything is extremely difficult. If not, you know, I, I know people, a lot of people, including myself, that have seen zero of any of those rarities. So perhaps it's a rarity adjustment in that direction, where they're gonna drop a little bit more often. But yeah, I mean, overall, hard to really comment. The amount of gold dropped by mobs has been reduced so this goes kind of again into the all of the different gold sink mechanics that they're introducing as far as balance changes what do you what do you think broadly about introducing more of a gold sink into the game uh, i mean i agree with it every game needs gold sinks um i i've seen quite a lot in this update so we're playing it is gonna really tell us how affected we are by these changes time will tell the prices vendors are willing to pay when buying player items has been reduced. This is interesting. I can tell you the one interaction to me that's the weirdest in, in prior patches is you can get a dropped item, you can bring it to the decryptor, you can pay to decrypt it, and then you can still sell it to a vendor and make a profit, even though you spent money to decrypt it. That, I believe they confirm that is no longer the case. You 100% lose money in that situation. But it's going to be interesting to see how aggressive they did this. But again, as a gold sink, it seems like a reasonable thing to kind of cut around the edges with. Backstab ability is now much more likely to connect with the target. As the master of the Shadow Blade, I'm sure you love this one. I'm bowing down to this specific one and hoping and praying that it is... As efficiently done as it says, this was a common issue with backstab, along with, you know, the issue of them staring at you when you're invisible or you smoke poof. But we, I don't see anything of that nature in this one, but hopefully we'll see something like that later. I'm glad this is fixed at least. Minor heal, superior heal, full heal, instant revive, basically a bunch of quantum fixer abilities now grow their max targeting range with ability level. Now, I love this one. This room really makes me smile. This is something that I, I've specifically had discussions with Buck about. Uh, just this idea that when you're putting skill points into abilities, 
there's a lot of flexibility with how what those skill points can do and how they can buff that ability a, a, as you put more points into it. It looks like they've gone ahead and, and made the max targeting range be like a growing stat over time as you put more points in. I, I love that, although I do want to see how it's implemented and whether it's just the overall size of the, the AoE or if it's if it's just like a targeting range thing. Like it, I want to see exactly what that is. Whirlwind functionality and balance has been tuned significantly. Warriors might be crying a little bit over this. I Who knows what this means, but to me this just screams mega nerf, and it's already, Whirlwind's already been nerfed. I'm personally glad to see that they have been nerfed pretty hard because seeing a spin to win for 15 seconds and just mowing down every single mob in the vicinity is just insane compared to what I can do. Um, I hope they don't weren't nerfed into the ground. Like you said, it's it's about how much they've done it because they were overtuned way too strong in most cases. Right, and I know actually me and Blazo were having a conversation where, from a warrior perspective, don't touch the damage. If anything, slow down the warrior when they're whirlwinding. Yeah, or anything like that. Or just you know, deal with the duration. Those. Yeah, be... I definitely. Uh, I, the damage is is definitely large, but if it, you weren't able to go running speed with your ability and you were at a, a crawl, it would make sense. An arcane storm can no longer be blocked or dodged. Yeah, I mean, that's just, you know, a straight buff uh, to Chronomancer. Fine. Tweaked when movement cancels combos for dual wield weapons. I I'm hoping that this is referring to Battleblade dual wield weapons. When you're attacking, you can cancel it smoother and move faster so you don't feel as if you're stuck in a attack as much or an animation because as a shadow blade you you, you got to be moving around quick you can't be stuck in something like an animation like that so i'm hoping this is referred to as canceling for movement speed purposes and then animation stuff t-rex has many new attack animations and is more prevalent throughout the game many ability cast animations have been updated and improved various npc animations have been updated yeah i mean just a quick note on the t-rexes in general t-rexes were a little underpowered and not super impressive in terms of their abilities they had and there was a specific bug with the quantum fixer smite where it felt like the t-rex did not have a knockover animation and so you'd smite it, and the T-Rex would freeze in place and then remain frozen in place until death. I hope that these changes addressed that. That'll be interesting to see. Uh, and then, yeah, really just gameplay stuff is going to be really, really cool. Players can now find artifact fragments throughout the world, which can be exchanged in town at a special vendor for a chance at NFTs and other rewards. So many things to unpack here. First of all, amazing idea to introduce this idea of fragments. I know we were having discussions about doing something similar to this because uh, it just kind of gives you more roles at an NFT, essentially, which is more exciting. And the whole idea of other rewards is kind of enticing. I wonder what that means. Do you have any idea what that would be, other rewards? I'm not too sure what the other rewards might be maybe like a, a large sum of gold or unique items. Um, I do find it very interesting that it, it does give you an external goal outside of the dungeons um, to, you know, farm throughout the dungeons and hold on to these fragments and go back to town and trade it in for that, you know, chance to get an NFT or these other rewards. If it's a large sum of gold, you'll be able to decrypt items buy a whole bunch or get a very special rolled item for unique and i'm i'm excited to see what comes of it new gear has been added to the game which replaces some of the earlier gear players could find in the world they have new appearances that further distinguish this gear from the more rare nft cosmetics yeah i mean that's pretty self-explanatory i'm glad they did that that was something where kind of a shell shock where you get an NFT drop, you put it on, you realize it looks the same as, as the base model. We knew this was coming, but I'm glad now it's much more obvious that these cosmetics are going to look different. They are going to look cool. There's going to be a lot of things you can do with them. Glad that's in there. Players can now unlock waypoints through the overworld. If a player dies, they will be taken to the closest unlocked waypoint to where they died. Additionally, Buck stated very clearly that the, the longer-term goal here is to essentially create fast travel waypoints where you're going to be able to travel 
uh, in between these waypoints as a way to move around the map faster. Uh, that should make solo play a little bit more easy to digest. Gold will now automatically be looted when players approach close enough. This is a big one. This is, I would argue, one of the top five changes in this patch. I know we've had a discussion about this. What's your take on this? There are a lot of gold sinks and gold reductions in this update, and so this will just help players, you know, collect the gold on the ground with allowing for an easier play and to see what the items you actually want. Players can now hold a key, V by default, to display information about all loot in the area. Yeah, I know that was definitely something that was a problem that they knew about before, where having all these when there's a lot of loot on the ground and all of those little indicators are popping up it can be hard to kind of get through a boss room easily so they have a setting that you can toggle that allows you to shut those off temporarily uh, but this is also an interesting way to do it i wonder if it's going to be better now to just permanently have them off and just use this button instead uh, i'll have to see with the implementation of that Portals that are one way will now require holding interact to enter to avoid accidental portal entry. <laughs> uh, dang, I'm not going to be able to block IC anymore. <laughs> no, that's joking, a joke. Of course, that's a joke. joking, of course. But um, yeah, I'm really glad that this was fixed because I saw forum posts after forum posts of people saying that they were accidentally teleported out of the dungeon because they joined a random party and, you know, they they were told to take the portal inside the dungeon and they got teleported back to town and they finished it without them. And so many of things like that that were just really obnoxious for players to deal with so this is just very important and you know they're listening to us they're listening to what people are saying annoys them and needs to be fixed in the the player's eyes and, and that's really good avenger will now correctly improve as more points are spent on it yeah seems like another bug fix ren skill now has 10 levels of potential upgrades uh, hopefully the there's a bit of clarity as to what the level ups do because again there's a lot of different directions they could go with that but I'm I like rend as a concept I'd like rend to be more prevalent so hopefully the level ups are really meaningful and it adds a, another kind of mini game and a lot of a little bit more complexity to what's going on that that's just I love that all quests now have some dialogue text associated with them explaining what to do. Okay, yeah, you know, quality of life, I like that. Added predefined scenes that player cameras will be snapped to during portal transitions. Uh, you know, again, seems like an amazing quality of life change. Really excited to see what that looks like. Objects in the world that get very near the camera will fade out to avoid occluded player view. Now, I know this one's essentially just, they're saying... The way the camera interacted with the environment before was a, could be a little bit jarring in certain instances, and it looks like they've smoothed that out. So that's another quality of life thing that's really cool. Several new types of quests have been introduced, offering different objectives for players to complete when adventuring in the dungeons. Um, we're going to explore this more when we get in-game, but what is, what's your just big picture, quick thoughts as to this? Because I know for a fact these are new mission objectives for the dungeons and they're they're very different i would say a lot of them are, are have a different flavor to them than what we've seen so far what, what's your general first impression on all of them well just reading through it here you know the soul drain mission i'm excited to see what this this comes of you know almost any game that i i've seen like this is a, there's been something around the lines of you know stay in the circle and you know fight the mobs and th this is kind of what it seems like this is and it says it's going to move around the map i'm excited to see how exactly it does that and uh they're corrupted portals that just another layer to the the, the game and mighty trials and the mining some orders like there's just so much more layers to the dungeons now that i'm really excited to see these dungeon these um objectives seem like they'll add way more depth yeah no it's gonna be cool uh, there was so much room to make really cool and interesting mission objectives uh, i'm really glad to see that they're doing this uh, i'm hoping to see more of this in the future i'm sure there will be uh, yeah i'm excited to really dive in and kind of mess around with these and see how that changes the difficulty of the dungeon 
Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, some AI stuff for sure. Ancient monitors, new abilities to use during combat. I, we've got some teasers on those. I, I think they can kind of blink around and they can trap you in some uh, some stuff. Yeah, and it looks like there's three new types of AI on top of that. And there's now a celebrate animation when they knock a player down occasionally, which is really cool. Uh, it's just something they've done so incredibly well is the, the kind of the character that you get from a lot of these mobs. Uh, you know, they have a lot of flavor to them. They dance, they they taunt you. Uh, this is just another layer of that that's just going to make the experience a lot more fun. And yeah, I mean, just a lot of visual effects stuff. The, the one thing I do want to mention about visual effects is I something that really stood out to me was the shrine changes. Visual effects updates for various types of shrines throughout the world. Shrines are kind of their own separate discussion that I won't get into here, but this is a good direction this is this is the start of hopefully something bigger where shrines become more relevant uh because i just feel like a lot of players don't use them and or they're unfamiliar with what they do and i know this is something that buck is aware of like you're saying this is, leads to a bigger problem with the shrines but like uh, i'm really glad that this is a step in the right direction that they're taking action on it um because i personally loved the shrines the movement shrine being my favorite so i could just go faster but it was incredibly underutilized uh, almost never did i see anybody else going for them and then obviously there's this new level the siphon we've gotten some leaks on this probably the most exciting thing to me is because that's not just a new tile set it seems like it's a whole new experience with a kind of a different flavor than what we're normally used to with these other dungeons. That's really sick. I'm super excited to jump in and see how that feels. I know I've mentioned in passing to Buck things about like having more platforming, more puzzle-related stuff in dungeons. Seems like this is a step in that direction. I really want to check that out and see what they did with it. Yeah, they, it even mentions navigation mechanics and puzzles. Uh, and then weather and lighting stuff, which they teased in the trailer that's really cool more portals have been added to seashore area which i know blazo was a part of kind of championing that really awesome that we were able to get that marsh water has been adjusted to be consistent with other water that is safe to walk in yeah that, that, that's just a kind of a quality of life thing i'm really excited to see the siphon i've seen the clips of it and it seems like a totally new immersive area that we can just dive in and see explore from edge to edge and then we have just some ui stuff uh which is the ping stuff i think everybody knows at this point they've introduced pings very excited to kind of mess around with that and the mini map same thing that was one of the other big leaks pretty excited to see what they can do with that feel like there's some room there to play with it and and make it even more of a rich experience. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's an amazing step in the right direction for sure. Awesome to see that. And then the whole emote wheel situation, I got to mess around with that. Really excited to get my hands on that. And then a lot of this is just, you know, Devolve has a new icon. Players are now encouraged to play in dungeons with a party for the first time. That's really cool. They're, they're, they've essentially improved the communication with players saying, hey, don't try to solo stuff, or you can, but it's going to be less efficient. I like that they're going out of their way to make sure new players are aware of that. Uh, and then there were updates to portrait icons and the what the look of the pocket watches. So that's really cool. Abilities will now display more information about their status in the UI. Very interested about this uh, for reasons that we won't go into detail here, but that is going to be very telling. Uh, in terms of my satisfaction with how things are progressing in that area. We'll, we'll talk about that later. This one's interesting. A character stat panel has been added to display your current stats. Now, again, this is something I specifically remember being vocal about, really wanting to be able to specifically see in, your, in one place all of your stats down to the number so that you can really get a sense for what's going on because there was a lot of ambiguity sometimes as to certain interactions or whether or not something was working or if it was bugged, I'm sure we're going to find even more, like we'll, we will end up discovering even more bugs now that this is in place, because it'll be much more clear to the player whether something is working or not. What do you, what do you think about this character stat panel? Um, I've actually seen uh, a leak of this and yeah, it's, it's definitely what we were asking for, uh, some more definitive uh, stats and exactly what we're working with uh, in a player. And when building a character and a build, it's really important to be able to know these stats. And it definitely needed to be in the game. 
fix some spelling errors in the UI. Awesome. Can't pronounce. I'm not even going to try to pronounce their names, but that's awesome that they found some spelling errors and that was ironed out. And the, the, the fact that they're shouted out in the patch notes is that's amazing. I love that. That's a testament to how much they care about the community and care about how what we're what we're doing for the game. They're showing it to us, guys. They, they, right there. Definitely. It's the little things that really matter. And that is a little thing that really matters. Party damage text now looks distinct from enemy damage text. We'll have to see the implementation of this. Somewhat unintuitively, damage text is really important in how it's implemented because it, it can, when it's done right, it can be really rewarding for the player. Uh, and so definitely, I want to see what they did with this. I definitely want to see what they did with this. Added the ability to bind input axes as well as buttons. Very excited about that. Very excited about that. So there's essentially more keybinds now. It is now possible to drop items by dragging them immediately to the left of the inventory area. Yep, looks like another quality of life change. Summon decoys now display the name of the summoner. Cool. I like that. Again, as a quantum fixer, I have a decoy. They're not amazing, but they're better than people give them credit for. I actually might mess around with them a bit more now. Uh, but I can tell you they're definitely better than what people think. Fixed audio slider background bar. I mean, it's just another bug fix. Players can now view objective progress when dead spectating. And then it looks like some sound stuff. Yeah. And that is the very chunky Ruby patch notes 0.2. I'm excited to dive in. 